We're in the ballroom, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all see it? Duran, I see you, Playboy. Face the USA, let's go. Okay. All right, we're all here? Yeah, everybody. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, great. Welcome, guys. This is the Nike Ballroom. We're celebrating 100 years of basketball. The tri branded effort between Nike, Jordan, and Converse. We're celebrating the World Basketball Festival. Also, we have it here in Harlem. To your left is um, the manifesto, the story behind why we're here today. And um, to your left here, to your right, I'm sorry, is um, the sneaker wall, which Fresco is going to walk you through. The in depth evolution of sneakers in its entirety. Me and what's going on, guys? Thank you for coming in. I'm Fresco, like you stated before. This basically takes you through iconic moments in basketball sneaker history and also the evolution of the basketball shoe. So we start off here with the Converse All-Star, the first mass-produced basketball shoe. This shoe is special because it's actually on loan from the Basketball Hall of Fame. This was worn and made in 1917, this particular shoe right here. Converse All-Star, the most popular basketball shoe of all time pretty much. And I see them everywhere. You can't go anywhere and not see Converse All Stars. The uh, Nike Blazer, 1974. The first high top Nike basketball shoe that was produced. Not used for basketball anymore, but definitely its roots. Its roots come from basketball, of course. The uh, Air Force One, out here in New York. We call them Uptowns. Uptowns. Basically, this shoe was the first shoe built for player performance and also the first shoe to use the Air console. Wow. The Air Jordan 1, the original colorway to this shoe was all black and red. That colorway was banned by the NBA. But he continued to wear these shoes, but he paid the fine that they would charge each game. But it was basically also promotion, which made the sales go through the roof. Uh, 1986, the Converse Weapon. This shoe was also on loan from the Hall of Fame, worn by Magic Johnson. This is his actual shoe that he played in in 1986. I'm not sure exactly what size that is, but your guess is this mine. I'd say maybe a 15, but Magic is six foot nine, so. The uh, Jordan 11. It's the greatest shoe of all time. leather. <laughs> According to him, the greatest shoe of all time. <laughs> Carbon fiber. According to Tinker Hatfield, this is his favorite design. Jordan 11. And when the Bulls went 72 and 10, this is the shoe that he wore that season. The penny composite, all molded into one, no seams, stitching. Great with ankle support. And this shoe is the fastest selling Nike shoe, Nike basketball shoe ever. More than any Jordan. This shoe right here, the original penny composite, this blue colorway, is the fastest selling Nike shoe ever. The Nike Shocks, it took 15 years to develop this technology. These columns here, they serve as springs, and if you guys remember when Vince Carter jumped over the seven foot man in the Olympics, he wore the uh, Nike Shocks. And that guy, Fred Frederick Weiss, yep. never played basketball again. Drafted by the Knicks. Drafted by the Knicks, the team that just should dismantle their organization. Oh, That's no, <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true New York boy. The Hyperflight at the time in 2001, it was the lightest shoe produced, and going forward with that, they just wanted to continue producing lightweight shoes that were also good for performance. But in 2001, this was the original Hyperflight produced for lightweight performance. The uh, Hyperdunk 2008, the Olympic colorway worn by Kobe Bryant in 2008 Olympics. It uses a uh, flywire and also lunar foam, which also makes it very, very light, breathable, and durable for play. This particular LeBron 7 here. LeBron 7s normally use flywire, but, oh, I heard the boo. <laughs> no need to boo, no need. Okay, no need, need to boo, yes. Yeah. Uh, unless you're from Ohio. Unless you're from Ohio, right? It's up to you guys. Anyway, it normally uses flywire, but this particular edition here is his MVP shoe from the 2009-2010 season. 
it was never released to the public. But unless you know LeBron, maybe you can get your hands on a pair. Maybe you don't want a pair. Yeah. Sorry. Good. The uh, 360 Zoom Air Unit here. Great, great shoe. The uh, Kobe 5. Maybe he's a Kobe fan, maybe not. I am not. Of course. <laughs> yeah. uh, also incorporates Flywire. It's the lightest shoe on the market, the lightest basketball shoe available on the market. And it's also a low cut basketball shoe, which is pretty much unheard of in basketball. But Kobe, he's a champ. So this was absolutely his idea to use a low cut basketball shoe, and it works for him. So how can we not? The Converse Evo. Basically, a spin off of the first shoe that I showed you, the Converse All Star. But 2010 version, breathable holes here, and memory foam on the inside, so it conforms to your actual foot. Hmm. So as you're playing in this shoe or you're wearing this shoe, the memory foam conforms to your particular foot. And this is the Puerto Rico edition, Puerto Rico. by Carlos Arroyo, of course. The uh, Jordan 2010, normally worn by Dwayne Wade. Michael Jordan's take on the game was that when he played, <laughs> he could see through his defenders, which is why it has the windows on the sides of his shoes. The Hyperdunk 2010, similar to the 2008, also uses flywire, but this flywire is slightly understated as opposed to being exposed as the 2008. This shoe is also a little bit lighter, and this particular one is the Yi Jinlin. He plays for the Chinese national team. If you look on the tongue there, you can see the YI. This is particular shoe that he'll be playing in the World Basketball Championships this summer in Turkey. The Hyperfuse which will be played in by Kevin Durant. Three materials, all fused into one. So this upper hair is all one piece. There's no stitching. So it's also a green shoe. It eliminates you know, less materials, more green. The Zoom Air at the bottom. Basically, Nike designers went to China, and it's very hot in China. And they wanted to produce a shoe that you could play in that was also breathable, that'll keep your feet cool as you're playing these rough days. So. Jordan now will take you through the evolution of the jersey and the basketball. Thank you, my brother. No problem.